Hello everyone and welcome to our class video about the Pythagorean Theorem. Our learning goal is that you will be able to use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the length of a side of a right triangle. You've probably seen the Pythagorean Theorem before some in middle school, but let's just refresh your memory. So, what is the Pythagorean Theorem anyway? Well, the Pythagorean Theorem is a relationship between the sides of a right triangle. It's important to know that the Pythagorean Theorem can only be applied to right triangles. It does not apply to any other kind of triangle. Okay, That is, the triangle has to have a right angle. The right triangle has three sides. One, the long one across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. No, not hippopotamus. I said hypotenuse. Who let the hippopotamus in here anyway? Okay, get it out of here. Come on. Okay, so anyway, um, so we got the hypotenuse. That's the long side. It's across from the right angle. All right, the other sides are called legs. We usually use the letters A and B to denote the legs, and C to show the length of the hypotenuse. According to the Pythagorean Theorem, if I take the length of A and the length of B, square them and add them, then that comes out to be the same as C squared, or A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You've probably seen that before. Okay, so let's look at how we can apply it. Here's our first example. We've got a right triangle with sides of 10 centimeters and 4 centimeters, those both being the legs, and we'd want to find the length of the hypotenuse, which is labeled x. Okay, so we know we're going to use Pythagorean Theorem because it's a right triangle, and I can recognize the location of C, the hypotenuse, by looking at the side that's across from the right angle. Okay, so that means I can put x in for c, and so that would be equals x squared. The legs are the 4 and the 10, so I'll plug those in for a and b. So we have 4 squared plus 10 squared equals x squared. Okay, so now my task is just to solve this equation. I know that 4 squared is 16, so I can go ahead and put that in. I also know that 10 squared, 10 times 10, is 100. Okay. So, I can write 16 plus 100 equals x squared. What can I do now? Well, I could combine the 16 and the 100 and make 116. So, I have 116 equals x squared. Now, how do I solve for x? I haven't gotten x by itself yet. There's still that squared on the right side. How do I get rid of the squared? Well, the opposite of squaring is to take the square root. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. When I do that, because the square root and the square are opposites, they cancel each other out, leaving me with just x on the right-hand side. Then I have x equals the square root of 116. But, of course, the square root of 116 is not simplified. I could break 116 down into the square root of 4 times 29. Because 4 is the perfect square, I can take the square root of it, which is 2, and bring it out front. So therefore, x is equal to 2 times the square root of 29. Okay. Notice that I did not just simply type the square root into the calculator. Unless we're working with a problem in a real-world context, or unless the directions say otherwise, in our class, I will ask you to write the answer to a Pythagorean Theorem problem always as a simplified square root, never as a decimal. This is because this is a more exact answer. If you make it into a decimal, you would have to round. And then, if we round, that answer is no longer exactly the length of that side, because we've cut off some of the decimal places. Okay, so let's look at another example. Now look carefully and notice the difference between example 1 and example 2. We're going to again find the value of x, 
We still have sides of 4 and 10, but what has changed? Now the x is one of the legs, and the 10 is the hypotenuse. Okay, that means we're going to have a different answer. The longest side is 10, so I know x is going to have to come out to be shorter than 10. I'm going to apply the Pythagorean theorem, as it's a right triangle, and I can recognize that side C, the hypotenuse, is the 10 centimeters. My legs are also, likewise, 4 and x. Okay, so plugging those in, I would have 4 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. Let's walk through how to solve it. Like we did before, I know that 4 squared is 16, and 10 squared is 100, so I have 16 plus x squared equals 100. Now, I need to get x by itself in order to solve the equation. How can I do that? Well, we need to get rid of that pesky 16, so let's subtract it. If I do that, the 16's on the left side cancel, and I'm left with 84 on the right-hand side. So now I have x squared equals 84. Is x by itself yet? Not quite, because we need to get rid of the squared. We need just x equals something. So what should I do? The opposite of squared is to take the square root. So let's do that. When I do, the square root and the squared cancel, leaving me with only x on the left side and the square root of 84 on the right side. Okay, so of course I still need to simplify. So I can break 84 down into square root of 4 times 21. 4 is the perfect square. I will take the square root of it, bring the 2 out front, and now I have x equals 2 times the square root of 21. Okay, so what was the main difference between these two examples? In example 1, we ended up adding the squares of the two sides. In example two, we ended up subtracting the squares of those two sides. This is because we needed to eliminate the 16 on the left-hand side. So where the side is that you're looking for makes a big difference. Let's look at one final example. In example three, we're again going to find the value of x but now we have this issue of having an expression x plus 3 on one of the sides. How am I going to handle that? Okay, well, let's figure this out. We're still going to use Pythagorean theorem. And by now you can probably figure out which side is a, b, and c. I'm going to put, plug those values in. I'll have x plus 3 squared. Notice I put parentheses around the x plus 3. That's because the entire side has to be squared. Plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Okay, so I know that the square of 13 is 169, and 12 squared is 144. That part I know. But how do I handle this x plus 3 squared there? Okay. Well, here, let's do it job to the side. Remember, something squared is times itself. So this is x plus 3 times x plus 3. I need to use the distributive property twice, or double distribute as I call it, in order to figure out what this is. Distribute the x, I get x times x is x squared. And x times 3 is 3x. Distribute the 3. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 3 is 9. I can combine those 3x's to make x squared plus 6x plus 9. That's what x plus 3 squared is. Therefore, I could put it back in the original equation. Okay, so now that I've got that, I need to solve for x. This is a quadratic equation, so I need to get all terms on one side and leave 0 on the other. Okay, so I can combine those like terms, plus 9 and plus 144, to get plus 153. Alright, 
In order to get 0 on one side, I need to subtract the 169. I'll subtract it on the left side as well. I'll have x squared plus 6x minus 16 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation more like we've seen before. You can factor it. So if I were to factor x squared plus 6x minus 16, I would get x minus 2 times x plus 8. From there, I can figure out the values of x. x is going to be either be equal to 2, or x is going to be equal to negative 8, using the zero product property. Now, in the context of this situation, it doesn't make sense to have a side that is negative. If I plugged in the negative 8, I would just have a side of negative 5. And that doesn't make any sense. So instead, it makes sense to say x equals 2. This would mean that the side length of that side is 5. Okay, you think you got it? I know that was quite a bit of information, but we'll be doing some more practice over the next couple days. Alright, see you guys in class.